As you were talking about the poetry and being able to take the poem and distribute it and see those lines, I just imagine a future where you could have a context and meaning of space and that you may be able to have visual communication where if you wanted to look at that tree and that tree has a connection to your lineage, your family, or a story about it, and then maybe there's a little immersive theater piece that is easy to create that you can annotate in that way and share that. I start to see the early phases of that with meme culture because memes are essentially like a form of visual communication that are taking cultural artifacts and remixing them in a way to say, oh, here's a dog jumping in a pile of leaves and this is what I feel like right now. And you're saying, with this embodied action in this video, this is my feeling. And then just ways to be able to take a juxtaposition of a reaction GIF and then add some sort of text that shows like just uh, last night there was like the longest World Series game ever that went to 18 innings and seven hours and 20 minutes. And I watched it and all these videos of, I watched the last hour of it and just to be a part of the experience because it was like, I saw on Twitter that people were watching it. And then just to see the pictures like, oh, here's a picture of Daniel Radcliffe when he was young playing Harry Potter. And then now, and he's like, oh, this is how much time has passed <laughs> in the course of this game. And people being just funny of like, oh, this was super long. How long was it? But to do like a visual depiction of that, and there was a foul ball that got hit. And then this was like, oh, this is my life. Where I want to go is this home run, but where I'm at is like the ball's foul. And just like taking a screenshot and writing that text on top of it is a sense of where augmented reality is going to go, where you're able to add your context and meaning of whatever your feelings are, of whatever embodied environmental action that you can start to annotate and then almost have like this meme culture that goes from social media into the world, but not just to be jokes and funny, but to actually convey meaning and to be able to connect to people and to tell stories about a place and your relationship to that place in that context in a way that helps allow people to understand what the lived experience is of a place. Like we're here in Bakersfield, and I have no idea much about Bakersfield. I was reading Wikipedia, but what would it be like to have an augmented reality experience that would be able to give me the sense of what the story of the place is and what it's like to live here? And it's difficult for me to access that without talking to people, but are there going to be ways to use the augmented reality technology that's connected to a place to be able to tell those types of stories. So as you were saying that, that poetry and connected to a place, I just made me think about what's already happening online in Twitter and social media and to extrapolate that out. Okay, what is the augmented reality? What's the spatialized version? What's the geolocated version of this? And once we have immersive headsets and you know augmented reality glasses, then how can we imagine a future where this is everywhere? And how can we actually use that to create this cohesive culture that is allowing us to connect deeper to each other? That's a really interesting set of questions. I keep thinking about graffiti because I really, I like graffiti a lot. I think that graffiti is almost becoming passe at this point. I mean, because people have grown more accustomed to it and more people do it. You know, when I see graffiti nowadays, I'm sometimes disappointed that there aren't like more experimental things going on in graffiti. But I'm a fan of it, and I see graffiti as an illicit annotation of the world around us, right? Even if it's just your name or it's some moniker that you go by to say, this wall, fuck your wall, or, you know, I, I want to use this space to make a particular kind of statement. I think that's a great thing. It's problematic, too, but I'm ready. I, I mean, for me, when I run that cost-benefit analysis, I think it's worth it. So when I think about the equivalent in augmented reality, on the one hand, I'm like, great. Everything becomes a canvas for everyone, right? And... You know, there'll be a lot of dick jokes and there'll be a lot of offensive stuff and there'll be a lot of poetry and there'll be kittens for sure because there's always going to be kittens everywhere if the internet shows up. So I like that. I like that there might be a way in which to tag that stuff with metadata and opt in and do that and perhaps sort and say, like, what is one particular group's perspective on a, on a given space? And do I want to see all of it? Do I want to see part of it? Can I sort it? I could see that being really empowering. I could also see it being a trap, right? I mean, it reminds me of how, like, this was a mind-blowing thing for me when I was taught, when I came to understand that Nixon founded the National Endowment for the Arts so you could control artists, right? Like, if that was the only way that you're going to get funding as an artist is to apply through these official channels, and then you're going to have to, you're going to, have to make certain kinds of art or the government's not going to fund it, right? Otherwise, we're not going to support artists at all.